everybody it's dr rick hope everybody is getting your week off to a great start as for me i'm into my second day of the week uh, it's got a lot going on uh once again everybody thanks for all the love and the condolences uh, as we prepare to lay my mom to rest um, you guys have breathed life into me you have inspired me you have sent warmth uh, it's great to know how many of you I have actually touched uh, in a positive way and I do appreciate it I really do um, you know how it goes if you like what you see uh, here on this channel um, click the like button click the share button subscribe uh, we talk about things that have an impact on the black community we try to identify problems that underlie the enigmatic issues that plague our community and produce solutions this isn't a whining and complaining platform this isn't uh, a place where we have intellectual debates for the sake of stroking our egos this is about identifying problems creating solutions uh, creating the mechanisms through which those solutions will be actually implemented and taking proactive action and so that's what it's about <clears throat> and with that in mind uh, keep in mind that we need your support for the things we do uh, nothing that produces anything of a value comes without a cost whether it's cost in time cost in sacrifice cost in actual money it costs to produce these things that are the literal lifeline to rescuing us from uh, socioeconomic despair from uh, poverty and oppression and so many other things that are a part of our continued history of ineffectiveness in this country and we have to be aware of what we're facing and what we're doing and the underlying or underpinning uh, catalyst behind it. So again, here we are. And uh, there's a young gentleman by the name of Musa Ali. Uh, I don't know if you follow him or not, but uh, he posts some things, you know, and I'm one of those people that I don't have to agree with everything you do. I don't have to do uh, this intense background before I'll sit up and say something you said has has uh, merited value. I'm the kind of person that when I see you post, I pay attention. Uh, and I, I, I like some of the things that this guy says. Uh, and the post was real simple, but it was extremely powerful if you understand the entire history behind it. He said very simple that our community does not rally behind our best and brightest. And I can, I, I can uh, honestly uh, attest to that, not solely because I consider myself to be one of our best and, best and brightest. I know who I am and I know what I've contributed uh, to our people. I know what I've given you guys for 30 years. I, I, I know this, but I watch others. I study others. I see others. And so it's not okay. You know, if it was just me and I was looking, I was saying, well, like, Rick, maybe you, you're not as dope as you think you are. Maybe you are not as uh, brilliant as some people whisper in your ear. Maybe you don't have all the answers and all this good stuff. And I don't have all the answers, by the way. Uh, not even close. But uh, I'm still learning. Uh, I'm still growing. But I think I bring a lot to the table. But the thing is, I'm looking at everybody else that I look at and I say, man, this person's got something going on. That's not where the rally comes in. The rally comes in behind predominantly empty entertainment, empty gossip, empty celebrity worship, any kind of thing that can be sensationalized. And we rally behind that. We get behind it and we pick our sides and we will literally destroy one another based off of this sensationalism and this celebrity worship and all this. And then here comes the people that say, hey, look, if you're tired of this happening, this is what you do. And you get, you go from 5,000 views to 100. And I know this because I've studied my page and I've studied other people's channels and I've studied. And unless you're making some kind of wild, crazy, empty promise 
unless you pick a fight with somebody else who has a platform and start beef, unless you do all this, you just kind of just move along and people will sit up and talk about, you know, hey, yeah, that's that's what's up right there. I, you know, you know, I really appreciate and all that. But as far as truly rallying behind those who are literally the lifeline and the measure of what's possible in our community it's 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 not happening it's not even close to happening we don't want i don't know what it it's like we're programmed to focus on the very things that destroy us we're programmed to seek out the things that have no intrinsic value we are literally conditioned in our mind i remember what uh dr uh, michael blanchard uh, we were having a conversation probably roughly around 10 years ago. And he asked me, says, Doc, how can it be that we have all this information that is constantly being given to us? And he named the people that he believed were giving it to. And he went back for, I mean, Asa Hillier, Dr. Jan Heinrich Clark, uh, Dr. Yosef Ben Yakim, and Dr. Naeem Akbar, uh, Dr. Francis Chris Wilson, Dr. Amos Wilson, and on and you know he he did he added me to the list dr claude anderson and i mean he, he added me to the list and he sit up and said why is it that we have all this and we we haven't made any progress and and my response was facts have absolutely no impact on the conditioned mind and when the mind is conditioned to do something until you change the programming you are moving against a force much powerful than the conscious mind, and that's the subconscious mind. The subconscious mind controls 96% of what you're going to do in a day, so 96% of what you're going to do in your life. And if the programming is focused on destructive behavior, the program is focused on giving attention to things that don't serve you. If the program is focused on having distrust for the people who can help you, if the program is focused on pretending instead of building, then that's what you'll do. And it's nothing no one can tell you that'll change it. And you will literally fight against it because in order to engage anything that is outside of your belief structure, outside of the scope of your subconscious makeup creates cognitive dissonance, which is a discomfort in your mental state that has to deal with uh, uh, opposing viewpoints. And so instead of having to acknowledge an opposing viewpoint, you find a way to dismiss it. You find a way to make it irrelevant. You find a way to discredit the messenger. Anything but actually having to sit there and deal with the fact that maybe I've been doing it wrong, maybe I've been thinking wrong, maybe that I've been behaving wrong, maybe I've been a part of the problem, maybe I'm perpetuating behavior that is not conducive to the very thing that I say I want, and that's black liberation, black empowerment. Maybe I need to be doing something different. And on the surface, it sounds like, hey man, you learn something new, you change. Man, change after the age of five to seven years old requires massive engagement, massive reprogramming. And if you're not in an environment, you're not in an environment where it's simply a new program. Say for instance, you move to a new place and everybody in that place thinks differently than you and you don't really have any out outside of that, whether it's in a job, a school, a new living uh, residential area, whatever it is, then that programming becomes a subtle shift in paradigms where you're starting to learn something new, see something new, and it's becoming the predominant uh, force in feeding your subconscious. And over time, the program shifts. But if you don't do that, that has to be some type of epiphany that drives you to change. And that's the kind of epiphany that's so strong. You just wait a minute, something's not right. And you start to seek out the information and you start to absorb the information rather than refute it, rather than dismiss it, rather than discredit the messenger. You start to consume it with, a, with, with an understanding of what's possible. So we've got work to do, but I agree 100% with what uh, Musa Ali said, and, and that is the black community refuses to rally around its best and brightest group. 
refuse to support the things that can actually change the narrative. We are going to have to do a better job of getting behind things that work. We're gonna to to do a better job of supporting things that can actually produce the change that we say we want. There's no other way around it. I've been talking to you about the programs, everything from Black Man Lead to the mental health programs, to the programs to stop domestic violence, to the program to address uh, childhood sexual abuse, adverse childhood experiences, and crickets. If it's not entertainment, now let me throw up something where it's a celebrity involved. Immediately, viewership goes up. Participation within the thread goes up. There's communication. There's everybody's got an opinion now. But when it comes to something that's literally the thing that could change the black situation, the, the situation plaguing our community, crickets. No support. All kind of excuses for why you can't support. And yet, let let a celebrity pop up and do something. Don't even have to be community um, community involved. It could just simply be, hey, look, this is what I'm doing. This is what's going on. Pop up. Roll up. Show up. Turn up. And I mean, it's sold out. Nothing wrong with being entertained. Nothing wrong with having a favorite this, a favorite artist, a favorite actor. Uh, you know, having politicians you get behind. But the bottom line is there has to be a connectivity of the energy and effort and focus. You give something as it directly relates to its ability to positively impact and change your life. Just, hey, man, they make me smile. They make me laugh. Hey, there's a moment. Yeah. You need to get away and you need to have a laugh because life can be life and sometimes I get that. But you've got to understand that you only have so much energy, so much focus, so much time in each day. And what you give that to is going to determine the outcome of your life. It's going to the, determine the outcome of the environment that you place around yourself. It's going to determine the capacity you will ultimately have to change the lives of the people you care about the most. And if you are sitting up and you are consistently pouring off into things that don't give back to you, don't set you up, don't prepare you, don't go out and make a move, make a change. And again, another thing we got to do, we got to start learning how to love ourselves by loving one another. We've got to reconnect in that area. We're so disconnected that if it ain't me, I don't feel it. And that is that disunity, that disjointedness that we, 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 we experience daily is one of the most destructive forces we have in the black community. We have to find a way to bridge that. We have to find a way to come back to one another. We've got to find a way that if it's happening to you, it's happening to me, because that's where we develop and we get back on code. That's where we start to have the natural uh, proclivity and incentive to do something outside of ourselves for something that impacts us indirectly, rather than if it don't bother me, if it ain't me, I'm not dealing with it. And then when it is you, you wonder why you can't get the support you want. It's because everybody's thinking just like you were thinking when it wasn't you. Look, on that note, look, I'm going to get ready to get out of here. I just had to point that out because I thought, I think it was such a powerful message. Again, if you believe in the work that I'm doing, show your love, show your support. Right now, I told you, I'm, I'm in the process now of doing uh, a 12 to 18 month study on... Uh, healthcare policy, state policies when it comes to mental health access for adult black males and how that directly relates to home, the homeless and prison population and also relates to adverse childhood experiences. Uh, so there are these links between other research I've done uh, and what, what, it, what it means overall and how it's impacting the black family directly and indirectly. We need to know that. And I'm presenting this. Once I complete this, I'm going to present this to state legislations across this country so that we can change some policies on a state level that allow families to get their loved ones the help they need before something bad happens. Right now, most of the laws, you have to hurt somebody 
or hurt yourself before you can even be put in a situation where you can get the type of intervention you need, especially with these dissociative disorders and these paranoid disorders. We really and truly have a lot of work to do, and I'm going to nail that. I'm taking it down. I'm going to take it under me because I'm getting too many people that are coming to me, and even when they have resources, are unable to sit up and get their loved ones the help they need, constantly being told, well, have they harmed anybody? Have they tr attempted to harm themselves? And what happens is they're just sitting there and they're time bomb and they're ticking and they're ticking. And a lot of times they end up hurting other people. Best case scenario, they end up homeless uh, in prison or they end up hurting themselves. And we can do something to mitigate that, but it's gonna take work. That's just one project that we have going on among many at the Odyssey Project. Again, asking for your support. Uh, the information that shows how you can give, there are a number of different ways you can give from Cash App to our direct link and processing uh, for our fundraiser. All of that is in the description box. Show some love, show some support. Let's make it happen. On that note, I'm out of here.